You need to stop making these mistakes in After Effects. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Now, don't get me wrong. Plugins are great, and there is some that I use on a daily basis and are a fantastic timetaber. However, it's a bit of a problem when you use plugins for everything. Sure, it'll get the job done, but do you know what it's actually doing, and do you understand what it's doing for you? I think if you rely on them too much, and you then move to a new job, or perhaps work in a certain studio, they might not have those plugins that you're used to, and it might leave you stumped on how to do something. That's when becomes a problem. So I'd recommend you just take some time to learn the process of what the plugin might be doing, rather than relying on just the plugin. The next mistake is something I see a lot with newer artists, and to be honest it's something I'm still guilty of myself, but it's one you definitely need to be aware of, and it's rushing your animation. Now what I mean by this is not giving your animation time to breathe. Now it could just be one thing happening continuously after another, or just cramming as many keyframes in one second as possible. This is known as time. Now it's important you begin to develop this skill of timing and it only comes with practice and evaluating each project you do or perhaps getting feedback from a friend or colleague, someone who can provide that constructive criticism without just completely tearing into your work. You need to think, is what's going on too fast? Can you read it and can your brain interpret what is actually going on on screen? That's the stuff that the client will be looking for and it's important you try and minimize the feedback that you'll be getting on a project as it'll also help build trust in your skills. Speaking of what your brain can process, can it process all those extra effects you're adding? Does your project actually need those effects and is it adding something or is it just something you wanted to add because it's a new skill or effect you learn? While there's nothing wrong with trying new things, it's important you don't add too much so it looks like a child was playing with Windows Movie Maker. There's the old design principle, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Sometimes you don't need to overdo it. And yes, while it might look cool, does it actually add to the project or does it become a problem and start distracting your eye too much? This leads me on to rushing your project. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes deadlines are looming and you kind of have to do some dodgy things to get a project through the finish line. However, if it's a personal project or some development work, Take your time with it. I know sometimes you might start something and then get the feeling of, oh, I'm getting a bit bored of this, I want to move on to something new and something a bit more exciting. But it's important that you stick with it. I firmly believe that just taking a day or two out from not looking at your project or your animation can make a world of difference. You might see things you missed the first time around or have come up with a completely new idea on how to animate something. I'm a firm believer in that it's always the extra 10% that will really make the difference to your project. So it's important that you take your time to add that. Now I get it, you get into the flow of things, then all of a sudden your project looks like this. But I can't stress how important it is just to keep things organized. If someone else needs to open your project, or even you do in the future, maybe the clients come back a year later and want an updated video, it can happen, trust me. Do yourself a favor and organize as you go along. Rename those layers, organize those folder structures, and don't just leave everything as shape layer one one, shape layer 2, shape layer 69. If you need to colour code your layers, just don't end up leaving it like this before you hand over or you're done with a project. Are you still moving your layers around like this or having to alter your keyframes? Well, you need to start using nulls. Now I've made a whole video on this, but nulls will become your best friend in After Effects. I remember a time I didn't use them and my mind was blown when I found out how much time I could save. Now think of them as a parent container for layers, or kind of like a folder structure. If I take all my layers and then parent them to a null, I can now change my nulls parameters without affecting any keyframes on my child layers. Now this means if the client wants to make some changes, I can easily resize, reposition, or change layers rotations without affecting any of the hard work and keyframes that I did. This is so much faster and easier than dealing with pre-comps for everything or redoing all of your keyframes. Now this one really grates on me, especially if I take over someone else's project and notice values that look like this. It means you're not aligning your layers. Now unless it's a design choice or to help the design look balanced, you should have no excuse for doing this. And you should always align your layers properly. I can do this in multiple ways and it takes no time at all. First control alt home will center a layer's anchor point, then if you press Control or Command at home, this will center the anchor point to the composition. 
or you can just go over to the align tab over here to accurately align a layer or evenly space a selection of layers. Realistically, you should be doing this before your layers are even in After Effects, but it's always good to double check and it gives you nice even values to work with and resort to should you need to. Now, if you want to align yourself with more After Effects videos, you can click on the screen now. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.